Hi, this is Jen with Upcycle Scrapbooking. Welcome back. We're doing part two of our paper lace doily um, Valentine's heart box. Let's see, it opens. We're making these. We were in the middle of starting to work on our trim, our little doily trim for our boxes. So um, let's get started. If you are just now joining us, you're going to want to go find part one of this series and then join us back for part two. Thanks. Okay, I know I don't have the best lighting but for this, but okay, put a piece of scratch paper down if you're gonna use a punch. I'm almost done with this one, so I'll just show you. Um, if you don't have a punch, um, use your decorative scissors. Just use your imagination, be creative. Um, okay, so um, let me just finish this up. I'm, I am punching on the um, one inch side um, you can see this is the the little half inch flap that we made that'll make our teeth like we did on the other one so let me finish up here um, you'll just uh, use that one inch now if you're using a deep set punch you can't use my measurements you're gonna have to allow because I think those um, deep set punches from Martha Stewart are themselves one and a half inch. So do a test of how deep it punches um, to know where you have to offset or allow for that. Let me show you real quick. This is all the paper that I lose when I punch with the normal um, normal punch. Okay, Oop. right there. I only lose like what is that, an eighth or a quarter? Um, yeah, I only lose um, about three, uh, three sixteenths. So that's just a little over an eighth. The reason I put the scrap paper down is because when you, <laughs> when you get done, you have this little tiny dots and mess. And I can just dump it in the trash instead of having it all over my board. Okay, so now that you've punched everything out or cut with your scissors, um, and I'm going to show you a neat way to do a special decorative um, edging uh, in another video or on my blog um, with your decorative scissors just to give you another look. Okay, so here it is. Now what we need to do is we need to cut um, our slits and we gotta get our scissors. Okay, so remember what we do, we're going to cut up to, instead of having one mark, we have two score lines. So we're going to cut, I'm gonna fold this, hold on just a second. All right, let me see if I can get that in there. There we go. Going to cut in the center of those two score lines. Okay? That little eight, eighth inch um, that you have, you're gonna cut that slit up to the to the center of that. Um, before we cut up to the actual top of the score line, now we have two score lines, so you wanna cut up into the middle of those. Okay, so let's just start cutting along on a diagonal. I'll show you so far what I have. Let's see if we can get it in the camera. I think you can see the score line right here. See the score line? And I've cut the slit up to the center of it right there. Okay? So we'll keep going. Remember, when you're done with this side, just flip it over and cut the opposite direction to finish it, making your little triangle teeth, as I call it. Okay, so I'm going to flip over, and they'll just start falling as I cut. So, here we go. Sorry, I'm not moving as fast all of a sudden. Kind of like I slow down. Okay. There we go. All right. Now, I know we have two to do. 
Um, so let's go ahead and cut our second one. Doing the same thing, cut up to that center. Um, oh, <laughs> what do you call it? The center of the score lines. Sorry. Okay. You could probably just fast forward through this if you want and go to the next step. Uh oh, what's my place? Hard to see in this lighting. It doesn't have to be perfect because nobody's going to see this. So don't worry about getting your triangles perfect. I, I like, um, if things are going to show, I, I do tend to want things to look, you know, um, asymmetrical or um, perfect or whatever. And, and you don't have to do that with this because nobody's going to see it. It's kind of like um, we did with the, uh, the teeth on the... Um, the red part of the box. Okay, well done. Yay, yay, yay. Okay, now again, we get to use our ATG or snail. Um, another idea is if you wanted to, you could use your score tape. Um, it's really nice and strong. If you're worried about that, just go ahead and use, I would use your half inch because this is a half inch and you want to make sure you cover all the way to the tip. For me, I'm just going to use um, my score tape, which is getting low, so I hope we won't run out. Okay, turn it over backwards and just run your score tape along the score line just below it. And then run it again next to it to make sure you cover all the tips of those teeth. Okay, I'm just going to gently pop it back up, make sure I don't have any... Okay, and there again, we've got our tape. Now, this is our top part. You have the cut side, and I forgot to tell you, if, when you're cutting these, you need to probably decide if you want to cut on the outside of the black line or the inside. But I wouldn't cut on the black line because you'll be kind of inconsistent and then all your hearts will be different sizes. But you'll be pretty consistent if you cut on the outside or the inside of the line. So that's up to you. It'll just make it like a sixteenth um, size difference. But they'll all be the same because you cut them the same. Okay, again, because this is the side that we'll be showing, this is the time that you want to emboss or um, in your embossing machines if you want. Uh, okay, so we're going to start on the opposite side. And you're going to need to put some tape down. Again, you can use your snail or this or score tape. This one is going to be super strong, but it's going to take some time. So I'm going to put it around the perimeter of where I'm going to be placing my lace, paper lace. Okay. I'm going to do another row of it right next to it, just kind of like we did on the the um, lace strip. Okay, let's see. We've got two rounds of that. Okay, now we need to fold these. The reason I didn't fold them before we did the tape is because the tape can actually help us out a little bit. Okay, so I'm just going to fold the second fold first, okay? You've got two score lines, okay? And not the first one, but the second one is the one you want to fold over first. And just, you know, fold and pop back just to get the crease in there, okay? Let's go, 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 go. there. Now if you were doing score tape instead of this, I wouldn't do the score tape first. Um, I would do the folding first. Okay, now we're wanting this to fold over like this. And that is how we make our pleats. Okay, 
see the little action here? It's going to go over like this. And that's why I have the tape, because it's going to help hold it, the pleat in place. Okay? So now you're going to want to fold your first fold the opposite direction. Okay? Alright, so I'm folding this all over. Sorry, I didn't mean to say opposite direction. Um, oops, sorry, my tape stuck. I'm just trying to keep it from touching each other. Well, I didn't have this much trouble the first time, so maybe you want to wait put your tape. That's okay. It's just, it's just that tape, and it just comes right back up, so it's no biggie. Okay. All ready. Okay? So, now here's what we're going to do. As you go, because you're going to need to turn this piece, where you line up, whereas this one pleat, oh, sorry, whereas this pleat is straight up and down, when you turn, they're going to tend to come at an angle instead of straight up and down. See how that goes at an angle so that you can turn? So you'll want to pleat these as you go. Okay? So we'll take our piece, turn it over to the side, and start. I go ahead and pleat the first one. Okay? I go ahead and pleat the first one to, to make it easy because we know it's going to be straight. So I just set it in that corner. Let's see if I can get this really well for you. Okay? And then you just take your next and make sure you go below that score line. And pleat and pinch. See, this is why it's great to use this instead of glue. Because the glue would ooze everywhere, out the front, out the back. It can get on your heart and it would mess all your hard work up and, and make it not pretty. And we want it to be pretty. Okay, so again, I want to make sure that that, that um, score line is not showing. And then I pleat and turn. And just, just pinch it. It'll go. I have the hardest. Oh, I'm sorry. I keep going out of the camera. I have the hardest um, weight of cardstock. I have the 110. So, mine is probably going to be way more difficult to, to pinch and turn than yours. Yours is probably going to be like a dream. <laughs> okay, because I'm sure none of y'all are going to probably use the 110-pound weight. Unless you just have that laying around. Okay. I do love the bright whiteness of it, though, against this. And your hearts don't have to be red. They can be shabby chic. I have a nice blue one with the um soft green and the um what's that color it's kind of like a, a tan but that off white i am sorry i keep going out of camera because i'm trying to do this show you as i go and see how it's looking it's so pretty okay we'll just keep pleating as we go make sure that it falls below the score line pleat and press Pleat and press. Sounds like an exercise. Pleat and press. Wow. Isn't that pretty? I'll show it to you right side up. It's prettier that way. Okay, let me show you the back. Okay, even the back looks nice and neat, doesn't it? I love things that look <laughs> nice and neat. Okay, so how do we cut the end off? Alright. The um, best way to do this is to cut, let me look at one of my hearts, oh, cut straight up um, from here. See the your point? You want to use that as your guide to cut straight down from there, okay? I'm going to have to do this upside down, but I'll try to get it in the camera so you can see, okay? So I'm going to line up with the point and just cut like that, and then I'll just pull this excess right here back and tear it off okay and now that that's trash there's no way to upcycle that now I want this little piece to stay down so I'm just going to ATG that one it's just the slightest bit right there on that fold make sure you keep your pleat intact okay there we go 
Look how pretty it is. Oops. Isn't she pretty? I have a feeling that you'll probably want to do what I was thinking of doing is starting to use this pleating technique in a lot of my projects um, and on like Mother's Day, oh that's coming, spring, all this would be really gorgeous, a wedding album, even a little girl baby album. Okay so let's do the other side. This time we're going to go ahead and fold it um, first and I wanted to make a note when you are um, putting this around you're gonna have to accommodate for here and we will be trimming but we won't do that first okay so here we go fold your second line first Just pop it over and go a lot faster when there's no tape on it so definitely do it without the tape first okay okay go back and this is going to want to pop over here, so you want to fold that. Sorry, that first line back now. You can just use your finger to kind of guide you to that score line. I hope I'm getting that in the camera for you. I apologize for not getting a couple times the other. We'll do it again so you'll get to see it um, again. Whoops. All in all, once you do this once, it is a really fast project. It won't take as long as the video because, you know, the video process is a little longer because you're just learning it. Once you've got it, you're good. Okay, so now it's time to add your adhesive of whatever kind you want, whether it's ATG, snail, score tape, red line, um, baloney tape, whatever you call it, uh, whatever you want. Um, again, whatever, if you have an adhesive, that I may not know about. I'd love to hear about it. Okay, here we go. We're ready. Okay, oops. Don't forget to put your ATG in here. Remember to do two passes. You want to do one right up against the, the edge of the heart. Down. And the next one right next to that. And don't worry, nobody's going to see this. This is going to be going down the top of the box. Even though it's pretty, nobody gets to see that prettiness of how good a job you did. Okay, so go ahead and pleat your first one. Okay, remember, we go ahead and get that one pleated. Oh, sorry. Wrong end. <laughs> okay, it will not be your left end. It'll You'll be starting on your right end this time. I apologize. And if you're left-handed, it's the opposite because you may have done the other side first. Okay. Here's what I was talking about. You're going to insert this in front of this piece. Okay? And just make sure that that score tab is not showing. We will trim this later. Okay? It's a little harder when you have to pleat backwards and you, and you are pleating the opposite direction. So it makes it a little bit harder. Okay. So I'll try to do this. Because see, it wants to go ahead. Oops. It wants to go ahead and grab it with the tape on there before. So you, you need to pre pleat a couple um, before you. Okay. Let me do that real quick. I hope you can see this. Okay. So I'm going to pre pleat that one and then line it up and pre-pleat the next one and then put it behind. It is a little harder the opposite direction but it is still still an easy project. See? It's, it's going. Okay. Then we're going to pleat and turn. Just make sure you get it just above the score line so nobody sees that little guide I apologize for you getting out of the camera. I'm sorry. <laughs> Look, I'm sitting here going, here, you're going to see it better the second time, and then I don't have it in the camera. How are you going to do it better the second time if I don't have it in the camera for you? Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I need a blooper reel. Bloop. <laughs> uh, retake. 
There's, I try not to do any free takes if I can help it. Oops. Okay. There we go. Oh, it's looking so good. I guess you could have pleated the other, you know, direction if you wanted to. Um, that would have been fine if you wanted to go that way. Oh, I did it again. I'm so sorry. If you want to go that way. <laughs> I'm sorry. Instead of the other way. That might have been easier. Okay. Pleat, pleat, pleat. It's not as hard as it may look on here. It's just you're sticking to everything. <laughs> okay, turn. Little corner. And I'll pleat that last little pleat before I decide to cut. And pinch it. Okay. Now, we've got two places that we need to trim. Up here and down there. Okay? So again, on the bottom... Um, you're going to trim a little bit different. You're going to trim on um, the underside at an angle. Oh, where am I going? So sorry. <laughs> you want to go just under your, your uh, lace there so it won't be showing. Okay. See? There we go. And of course, mine's not perfect, but what part is perfect? Okay, so just make sure that everything is sticking down in the back without a problem. Okay, everything looks good. If you want, uh, we're going to be adhering this back down the box, so we'll be adding more tape on here. So you won't have to worry about anything coming uh, loose or anything. Alright, so flip it over. Now we need to, to do the top. It's totally up to you. Let me get a better angle. Can, see. can you see this overlap right here? Okay. You'll want to cut straight down to that if you want. And that will just make it look like it's continuous. Okay? It's up to you if you want to trim it. Totally up to you. Okay. So now we're going to add it to the top of our box. So let's get our box, one of our boxes. Okay. Oops, let me throw my scrappings away. Don't like having to wash. I need one of those little holes in holes in your desk that you can just swipe it into the hole. I'd love to have one of those. Maybe you all have one of those. Okay. So this is really simple. Um from here, if you wanted to use glue, be my guest. Um, if you wanted to make sure, um, you'll just put you'll put the glue on here, not on here. Okay. So um, if you wanted to, you could cut another part and put it over this, and then glue it on top. But you you really don't need to because it it covers it. It's the same size. So um, we're going to be adhering this right on the top. Okay, so you're going to use your ATG score tape, glue, whatever you want. I'm going to go along the score line. That's that's going to be my guide. And then fill it all in inside. Okay, so I'm going to just go again around. I'm squeaky. Squeaky, squeaky. I have a squeaky heart. Squeaky heart. Okay. Now I'm just going to fill it in. I'll just go at an angle because it's easier. But I want to cover it completely. So I don't want this, again, when you're making presents, you want it to be the, you know, your best work. So, you know, add that little extra love in there by using a little more of your, your adhesive. So that it's not going to come apart on on your um, person that you're giving the gift to. Okay, this is the same size heart as this one. So even though you cannot see the heart to match up, you can feel. Um, you can get a quick. Um, this little right here kind of went around your. So it's a quick. I'm just gonna put 
the top. I'm not going to press it all the way down. I'm just going to hold it at the top like that. And I'm going to kind of feel to see if it's about the same height and about the same place. That looks good. Okay, just press it down. Press your edges. This is a good time to use your um, one of your big fat kindergarten pencils. Just press it down. You can use your bone folder if you want. Okay, here it works really well. Remember, you could put uh, a hidden message in here. Um, you could write something or you could get another heart. Or before you put this one in, you could have put a neat little message in there um, for them and uh, when, they, when they open it. Okay, so this is our, you know, the bottom of our box. This is the top. So it fits, and you'll just do that again on the uh, on the bottom piece. Let me show you when I finish. Here's the one that I finished that is embossed with the Swiss dot cuddle rug folder. Okay, and it just opens up like this. You can put whatever you want in there. It could be a note. It could be a candy. It could be um, a snack of some kind, like. Um, my uh, four-year-old likes goldfish. I'll probably put that in there instead of candy. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this project. Um, I will put on my blog a um, a little, just maybe some pictures, maybe a tutorial. I'm not sure. Um, I have a punch that looks like this. I was trying to find a more masculine way to make hearts, and you may just leave them blank without the lace if for boy. Or you may think of something different. I'd love to hear it. This is one of the punches I have. Okay. And that's how it turns out. Look how pretty that is. So that's another. Um, let me get it closer. See how pretty. Now. Let's say you don't have the money for a punch. Um, I definitely. Have, I'm there all the time. I have to use my sales and 50% off coupons to get them. Because they're so expensive. That's okay. You don't have to. Um, you can use some decorative scissors. Um, real quick, let me grab my decorative scissors to show you. I have them right over here somewhere. I'm not sure where I put them. I put them to show you, and now I've lost them. So, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> We're going to have to just go with our imaginations. <laughs> Um, okay, so you have some scissors that would be scalloped. Um, that would be good. Um, big scallop, little scallop. Uh, one is called Cloud. It's a blue aqua type scissor. I'm still looking for my scissors. I have no idea. Okay, my kids probably took them. Okay, here is a handmade version of, please don't look at my pleading. I was in a rush. But this is a handmade version. Uh, I made my own um, punch out of this. So first I took my strip, white strip, and I cut um, a, with my scissors, um, a scallop, the little scallop, okay? So with the scissors, okay? Then I went back and in every tiny scallop, I took my um, hole punch, one of my hole punches, not this one, my smaller um, scrapbooking purple one um, that you can get at your craft store. Um, and I put it inside each scallop. So that now it's comparable to this one. Look at that. Or this one. You could probably make this one too um, by just using the larger scallop. And the larger, um, the this hole punch, oops, this hole punch in the top part for the bigger hole, and the smaller hole punch in the valley. So I may make that and show you all on the um, 
on my blog. I don't know if I'll do a video on it, but it'll definitely be on my blog this week to, um, to show you how to do that. So um, I hope you enjoy the project. I hope that you will be um, showing me what you made and put it up on a video response and on your on your YouTube or on, on your uh, blog and give us a link so we can all see what you made and learn from each other. I hope you all have a great week and a really great Valentine. Um, God bless.